Yo, what's going on, YouTube? Your boy Pony Montana. Today, um, we got another uh, mutt head video for you guys. It's it's gonna be salary cap based, and what we're gonna be going over today is the top ten salary cap beasts to have on your team for salary cap. Now, the competitive circuit is on its way, man. If you guys haven't, make sure you guys sign up uh, for your club championship and all that stuff for the whole Madden club championship series and stuff like that because if you don't if you don't have like a madden rewards account and stuff like that you guys won't be able to uh sign up for to play for a club and with the club championships you guys can play for your favorite nfl team and you know try to take try to take a belt home and the grinding started as soon as the game dropped so salary cap grinding is already on its way you can qualify through weekend league, but salary cap is definitely the way to go because it'll get you kind of used to playing salary cap and all that good stuff. Uh, last time I had my webcam up and it kind of got in the way of some of like the stats and stuff. Not not the stats, but like the it got in the way of some of the some of the like uh, positions that were on the field and stuff like that. So today I'm just gonna be bringing you guys the top ten budget beast. That you guys can put on your defenses and offenses uh so that you know they're low in cap but they're not going to be too much of a liability on the offense or defense to kind of like destroy you if if you will now oh, oh hold on now for we're going to start with defense we're going to go five defense and five offense now we're going to start with defense and this is this is uh this is a competitive favorite right here and number one on the list is Troy Apke. Now, if you guys don't know, in nickel formations, you can now substitute a safety in at your linebacker spot in like one of the interior linebacker spots. If they're like on the line, you can't really do it. Well, you can't do it at all. But like if they're kind of like in the interior of the 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 linebacker core in nickel, you can substitute a safety in those positions. So. A lot of the competitive people that you keep watching and stuff like that, they are using Troy Apke as one of their main users. I use him on Mutt because he's got 87 speed, and that's enough for me to do whatever I need to do. And even if I want to man him up on somebody, he's good enough to do that while I go user a linebacker. But having 87 speed, that's faster than any linebacker in the game currently, and you kind of can't go wrong with having a safety there, a 6'2" safety who's more agile who's faster than any linebacker in the game also i don't really drop too many interceptions with him and stuff like that but when you do it can get a little bit frustrating so watch out for that number two on my list now this is this is somebody that i don't see a lot of people using but in a lot of formations you kind of need to tank at some spots and you also don't want to give up uh you also don't want to give up like uh, you don't want to give up like any type of speed if you will now Dion buchanan this is number two on my list and 82 speed this whole list is pretty much going to be based on speed like who's who's the fastest guy that's not going to be the worst guy on your team and Dion buchanan is definitely definitely one of my favorites to use because he's a linebacker um and he's got great catching stats so me i personally used user him because I didn't know about the whole safety going down at linebacker and stuff like that. But if you guys are looking to run like a 3-4 or 4-3 defense, Deion Buchanan is definitely a really, really good option to have on your field. Number three, we are going to go with, pretty sure it's Tar, 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 Tarvarius Moore. Same thing as last time. In those nickel formations, you can put a either strong safety or free safety in that slot and Tarverius more 20 cap um in some of the in some of the nickels you can put both of them like you you can have both safety so you honestly don't even need a linebacker in that spot for you to for you to be dominant with like your user 67 catching not that great but if it's your user you're more you're more likely than not going to be catching the ball anyways 90 range, which is amazing. So 87 speeds, another 6'2 safety that you guys can use. Um, he, I think he weighs less than the Troy Apke too. So he's gonna be he's he's gonna be getting to the ball a lot, you know, a lot quicker, if you will. Like weight and height really like makes it's a it's definitely a determining factor on whether 
you know, you're going to be able to get to the ball faster or not. Now, number four on the list, and I don't want to butcher this guy's name, so I'm going to go with the other guy first. And number four on my list is we're going we're, we're going to take it to the trenches. And we're going to go, well, where is he? 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 Did I spell his name wrong? I think it doesn't have an L. Yep, right here. Boom. All these guys are 25 cap and under. Um, I think they're like 23 cap and under. I think the highest was that Deion Buchanan. Um, but number four on my list is Malcolm Brown. And the reason why I put him on the list is because he's somebody that you guys can put down at D tackle with pretty decent block shed. Now, for D tackles, you want block shed a lot because, for one, not everybody's going to beef up their O-line. And if they are going to beef it up, they're not going to beef it up with people who are going to be good at run blocking because passing is the meta this year because so many people are kind of – so many people don't really know how to run the ball still. I know the game's only been out for, you know, a little over a week and a half, but a lot of people still haven't gotten the run down. So a lot of people try not to run. And if they do run, they're running in, like, those – like those I form sets, those sets that are like one three one or two one two and stuff like that, and you're 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 gonna know that a run is coming, so you're gonna be able to prepare for that. But if you're running like you know any type of passing defense and they try to sneak in like a like a draw or inside zone, Malcolm Brown is gonna be enough to get a block shed to actually stuff the stuff the run from from time to time. And he's not as slow as like a Damon Harrison with like fifty two speed. He actually has decent speed for a fat, slow, low-cap D-tackle. All right. Now, I don't want to butcher this guy's name, but number five on the defense, um, F-O. We're just going to call this dude F-O because that's one weird ass name and i can't say it now if, if you guys play rags and stuff like that if you guys use the falcons there this guy on rags is 90 speed at linebacker so it's only right mutt gives him a decent card on the offensive uh i mean on the mutt side of things 19 cap 68 overall obviously the overalls aren't going to be that high because these are all budget players but at linebacker my man has 83 speed now, linebacker is one of the positions that a lot of people tank, and it's because of the nickel situation that I keep talking about, but it's literally, like, game-changing this year because last year you couldn't sub a safety in a linebacker position. But this guy has enough speed at middle linebacker to be able to help you out a lot more than, than one of those budget safeties will. But the only problem with this guy is – he doesn't have any type of block shed. But at middle linebacker, he's got 83 speed. So if you're looking to have a 3-4 hybrid type of type of uh, set with your nickel and, and stuff like that, I hope, hopefully, hopefully I didn't butcher that too much. But yeah, 68 overall, 19 cap, 83 speed. Doesn't get better than that. 65 catching on a linebacker, that is actually pretty decent. We had a safety who had 60. I think Troy Apke's catching is like 60, and the other dude was like 67. So for a middle linebacker to have 65 is actually really, 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 really good. Now, let's take it over to the offensive side of things. We're going to start off with the with my favorite budget guy, and that is John Ross. 24 cap. This is the highest cap dude that we're going to be talking about. But 90 speed. 90 speed. Currently, there are three guys with 90 speed on the offensive side of things. And I think that's John Ross, Randy Moss, and Tyreek Hill. I think those are the only three guys with a core 90 speed. And that's that's enough for John Ross to be on my team any day of the week at any point in time on salary cap. You, you just can't, you can't teach speed and 90 speed is insane for salary cap. Like he will be burning defenses. As you can see, his vertical threat, according to Mutthead ratings is at 94. His rack catching is at 93. He probably doesn't even have bad stat, bad traits either. Drops open passes. That's the biggest one. No makes possession catches. Yes. Makes rack catches. Yes. That's all you need. You don't really care about aggressive catches because he's not. You're not. You're not getting him to jump 
over the top of the defense and stuff like that. Plus, he braces for all hits. I know that's one of those like weird traits, but still, like John Ross is like a budget god. Number two on my list. Hashtag, hashtag Chark Week. <laughs> like, 87 speed. Again, but the difference between uh, Chark and John Ross is I've seen Chark get, like, the glitchiest animations. He must have really good traits, too. Yeah, look at his traits. Rat catches, makes possession catches, doesn't drop open passes, and he makes sideline catches. And he has a high motor, and he braces for, for all hits. Now, when you're looking at these budget guys, traits matter a lot especially on, on the offensive side because if they don't have the possession catch um trait they won't they won't get their feet down on the sidelines and stuff like that well on the makes sideline catches obviously but the possession catches and i know they're broken but they are they will be patched ea is probably on that like as we speak but this guy is like a stud you see a lot a lot of competitive players run this dude on their on their salary cap team, it's because he's, I don't know, he's just really, really glitchy. As you can see, his vertical threat is 95, which is even higher than John Ross's, and his rack is at 90. You can't teach speed, and in salary cap, speed is a must. All right, number three. Number three is personally one of my favorites because he's small. He's now a halfback. And he's just speedy as hell for a halfback. There's not a lot of really fast halfbacks right now. I think the fastest is that new Kareem Hunt that came out. No, Kareem Hunt and Saquon Barkley. I think they're 89 speed. I think that's the fastest that uh, halfbacks go. Oh, I think Corey Grant as well. And Corey Grant is on this list. But, yeah, 87 speed. And for some reason, these 5'8", these, like, really, really small, small halfbacks, they're hard to tackle. Like always, like they're always really, really hard to tackle, and Tavon Austin fits fits that build perfectly. Eighty six agility, eighty eight acceleration, eighty seven speed. Now the only problem with these guys, with these uh, with these budget halfbacks, is they're low overall, so they obviously have like really low carrying and stuff like that. And you might want to be putting them on uh, conservative, but this is these are more guys that you can just kind of throw in there if you're a heavy passer, but you want the speed to like run a draw play from time to time and stuff like that. So Tavon Austin, per definitely perfect for that. Um, We already talked about it, so let's just drop him in right now. I don't know, do we spell it with a G or new? Another halfback, this is number four on the list, and it's Corey Grant, even faster than Tavon Austin. 5'11", 72 overall, 19 cap, which is really, really good. And he has a little bit higher carry, but we all know the carry, the carry rating doesn't even really matter. It's that that matters right there. That that trait, those traits. Braces for all hits is the biggest trait for a running back to, to have because you don't want you don't want your low cap guys, your low um, budget beasts to be fumbling on you and stuff like that because that – Fumbles always get really, really, really frustrating. It doesn't matter who you're playing with. But yeah, Corey Grant, my number four on the offensive side. There's not much to say. He's pretty much a faster Tavon Austin with a little more height. And he kind of breaks tackles a little, little bit more than, you know, he gets those animations where, like, he's just, just running downfield pretty much. And last but not least, this one, th this dude kind of gets overlooked by a lot of people. But this is my favorite. This is my favorite. Him and John Ross are probably my favorite cap goons to rock with. Uh, Jameez Olawali. Don't know if I butchered that, but this dude to me is an absolute stud. 24 cap. He's a fullback, but the thing about fullbacks is you can put him at tight end. Now, at tight end, 80 speed, which is awesome for a tight end. I think the fastest tight end in the game in Mutt is Evan Ingram. So for him... So for Jameez to only be three speed below that is amazing. Plus he has, according to Mutthead, he's a great rusher and he's great at pass protection. And I've seen this dude get really, really glitchy trucking animations. And his trucking is only 78. But at the same time, you got dudes in salary cap that are running with Troy Apkes and your Tarvarius Moores and stuff like that. So if you got a guy like Jameez, he's going to be able to sit there and truck people and be able to you know kind of get kind of kind of destroy people on the offensive end 
you know what I mean? And he's got 60 catching, which I think catching is like a broken trait. But everything else, 70, 70, 70, 70, 84, 80, 70, 70. He's obviously, you're not going to be spinning or juking and stuff like that. 70 and his pa- look, pass blocking, 73, 72. Like, the dude's, the dude's amazing. The dude is a salary cap goon. And honorable mention, because I've been using him, and he is, he is a stud. Jalen Merrick. My God. If you guys are in, and I keep bringing it up, but they're the best defensive formations in, in the game. So if you guys are in nickel, dollar, all that stuff, man, this is a must-have stud. 89 speed you can't teach speed and he's only 20 caps so you got an 89 speed stud who you guys have blitzing off of the edge screaming at the quarterback and it's lovely i use him in mutt still because he's so fast that it's kind of hard to stop somebody who's so damn fast so this is my honorable mention for the video uh jayla merrick is really really glitchy really really good um yeah, man, like this is th- this this dude balls out, but I just didn't want to put him on this list because I feel like I feel like he doesn't really play coverage like at all. He's like a liability on coverage defenses and stuff like that. Like, yeah, you can man him up on like a John Ross type of player because John, John Ross isn't going to he's not going to be out routing anybody. But so, from, from time to time, a John Ross will out route a Jalen Merrick and it's, you know, so like he would be a liability. All the other dudes that I mentioned in this video are either going to be decent while you're throwing to them, running with them, uh, usering, and that's it. Like you can use her Dion, you can use her Troy Apke, you can use you can use her uh, Tarvarius Moore, Aluokun, and Malcolm Brown is just going to be sitting there plugging up, pl- like plugging up the gap. So yeah, Jalen Merrick, he's a little bit of liability because you can't really put him in coverage, but you can if you're like trying to man up one of those low cap receivers that they have on the other side. But it's they can have a, a Julian Edelman on the other side, and Jalen's gonna get out routed by a long shot. So yeah, man, if you guys are were looking to beef up your salary cap teams, man, this is this these are the guys to add to those teams. Um, you can also add like power ups too, because I know like there's like power ups that are just ten cap, but they're just not that good. Like I know that there's a ten cap Delaney Walker. And these power ups go for almost nothing. 2K for this Delaney Walker on PlayStation, 1.5 on Xbox, 10 cap. And these are these 10 caps are the ones that you are the filler guys that you just literally throw on the team just so they could, you know, fill slots and stuff like that. There's no one high, there's no one lower than a 10 cap. So if you guys haven't, make sure you guys sign up for uh sign up for Madden Rewards because whenever you open a pack madden tracks that and i know some some people might be a little iffy on that but you sign up for madden rewards and uh, let me see if i can show you guys here madden club championship series this is why i'm bringing you guys these salary cap videos because madden club like the the club championships are on salary cap and that's why i said that it's better to start beefing up your team now and stuff like that because uh that's where everything is. I haven't signed up yet. I haven't signed up for a club yet because I kind of want to have my own live event if I do make it. Um, but yeah, you guys have you guys have to register here. But you guys have to have a Madden, a Madden rewards, uh, whatever you call it. So you register, learn more, register now to the club championship, and it will lead you to you being able to pick whatever team you want to sign up for represent your favorite team. I'm a Colts fan. So I might do those if I don't care about the live event. Um, but I do want to have my own, like I want to go to a live event, like where there's like an event on Twitch or YouTube and stuff like that, just like I did last year. But, um, that's why I'm bringing you guys these salary cap videos to kind of get you ready for this. Like if you guys haven't started, start today, start building your, your club championship team and make it because they're taking a lot of people there's literally going to be eight on every console um and then there's going to be an online portion and then the online portion is going to lead to two on playstation and two on xbox and then that's going to be their live event and 
this is the biggest prize pool for club championships ever. I think 700K is going, it says right here, 703, $703,000 prize purse for the club championships. So if you guys have it, man, dive into it. I'll leave the description down below. If you guys like the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. Um, and let me know how your salary cap teams look. All right, I'll see you guys later with another video. All right, I'm out. Peace.